Again, thanks everyone for joining us today. We're here to talk about Giving Day strategy for One Island Giving Day. My name is Bethany. I work here with Mighty Cause, the technology platform partner uh, that is working alongside uh, your local contacts to um, provide the technology for this Giving Day. Just to give a brief overview of what we're going to cover in this training here, uh, we're going to start with some key Giving Day basics. Uh, for those that might have missed our initial training or need just a quick refresher, we'll start with some basics, spend the majority of our time talking about campaign strategy, and then close it out covering some of the really exciting incentives that are as a part of the day, leaderboard prizes, as well as other hourly prizes that will be given out throughout the day on the giving day. Uh, so make sure to pay attention all the way to the end uh, for information about ways that your nonprofit can win extra prize funds and walk away with even more than you're able to raise with your really effective, successful campaign. Finally, we'll leave some time at the end for Q&A in case uh, it pops up throughout. Again, feel free to type into the go to webinar control panel on the right hand side of your screen if you do have questions throughout the presentation. So to start, let's cover some key basics here. Now, we'll cover these very quickly and briefly in this training. If you're looking for a deeper dive on these basics, how to manage your page, uh, key things about getting yourself up and running for One Island Giving Day, make sure to visit uh, the One Island Giving website and access that first training that we did, which really was a focus on these basics and uh, all the initial information you needed to know to get your page up and running, your campaign up and running for the event. So the very first step to participating is to register your nonprofit. This is true whether you participated in last year's event or if you're brand new this year, every nonprofit that wants to participate in this campaign must register, fill out a registration form and receive an approval email in order to be eligible for those exciting prizes we're going to talk about at the end. So it's a very short form available right from oneislandgiving.org. Click that big button that says register. You will get access to your organization's page and then you'll be able to add or remove any additional people from your staff that should also have access to the page. Uh, and keep in mind that deadline for registration is coming up very quickly here on October 1st. So if you're not registered, make that the first step you take after today's training to visit oneislandgiving.org and complete that registration form. So once you have access to your page, you'll come to the platform and navigate your dashboard to update and manage all the key things related to your organization for this campaign. So we'll do, again, just a brief overview here of the key items that you'll see on that dashboard. Uh, and then again, please feel free to access that first training for more detailed information. You'll start with your home screen right at the very top of that dashboard. That's going to get you up to date on your key metrics, as well as a to-do list that you can follow uh, that will make sure that you have checked off all the most important items to getting your nonprofit page set up ahead of the event. The next item down is your profile, and we'll talk more about this on the next slide, uh, but this is really the key page that you will customize and update and share with your supporters to accept donations for this event. Next item down on your dashboard will be the donations tab. This is where you can access your donation data, including uh, donation reports that will update in real time in advance of and during the event. You can access any disbursement information once you receive uh, disbursement from um, One Island Giving Day. If you need to reconcile that, you can access those reports right there, as well as the ability to customize the donation experience. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Campaigns is the next screen down on your dashboard that you will see if you have any fundraisers started for your organization, whether your organization has started any of these campaigns 
or whether any individuals have started these campaigns for your organization as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. If you have any of those campaigns available, you'll see this icon on your dashboard with the ability to easily navigate, manage, and see all of the different fundraising efforts happening for your organization. And finally, the last thing you'll see on that dashboard is, of course, your settings. This is where you can uh, control some of the overall settings for your page. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you'll have the ability to add or remove administrators. You can do that through your settings page. You can also sign up for electronic funds transfer direct deposit through this settings page. So just a brief overview of what you have access to and where on that dashboard that will be available on the left-hand side of your screen when you are logged in as an administrator. So the profile, again, as I mentioned, is really the key page that you will want to update and customize to tell your story. This is the link that you will be sharing with your supporters for the giving day. This is the link that will go in your email, in social media. So you really want to use this page to tell a powerful story. And you've got lots of options on the page to customize the look and feel from updating a background image to really help donors feel the context of your work, putting your logo front and center on the page, choosing a theme color that will carry throughout the page that really ties back into your logo. Lots of other things that you can do, including adding videos, links, photos, and text to really get donors excited to make their gift to your organization. I mentioned briefly before the ability to customize the donation experience. This is available through that donations tab on your dashboard. The, the real power of this tool here is that you can both customize the experience and then preview the experience so that ahead of the event, you know exactly what it's gonna look like when a donor comes to your page to make a donation. So first you have the option to choose what donor data you collect, whether you need address or phone number, or if that's not critical for your, in your organization, you can leave those off so that you can streamline the process for donors. That's up to you to choose what of that demographic data is really important to collect from donors. You can also add in custom donation suggestions. So explaining to donors what a $25 gift will do for your organization or the impact that their $50 gift can have. Adding that further information so that when a donor comes to make their donation and they're trying to choose a dollar amount, your suggestions and your explanations of the impact with those suggestions can help them inform that decision and really connect them to the message they've already seen on your email, on your donation page about what you're raising funds for or what the impact is that your organization really has. Finally, you have the option to customize the thank you experience. So you can build out a thank you page that donors will see as soon as they complete their donation. You have lots of flexibility here to add photos, videos, your own button uh, with the call to action link that you wanna take those donors to. And you also have the opportunity to customize the thank you receipt that will be sent to donors. So you'll have a section that you can add your own uh, custom message that will get added into that receipt that is automatically sent to donors. So lots of opportunities all the way through the donation experience to really customize that and personalize for your donors. And once you've done all that to customize it, you have the opportunity to view the checkout right in this tab so that you can preview the experience, see how many steps you're asking donors to take, you can also preview that thank you experience. Get a sample receipt sent to you so that you can see what that receipt looks like for donors. Preview that thank you page to make sure it's really telling a powerful story of thank you as soon as the donor has made their gift. So lots of opportunities there. Really encourage everyone to make sure that they take time to both customize and preview that experience ahead of the event. Another really important basic to keep in mind for this giving day is use the resources that are available to you. So oneislandgiving.org has a 
nonprofit toolkit available with lots of helpful resources, tips and tricks to help you be successful with this event. So you'll find the first training that I've already mentioned available, the recording available on that page after today's training, this recording will be available on that page as well, along with other social media tips, communications templates, uh, logo that you can use when you're building out your own communications. So definitely make time to view that nonprofit toolkit and take advantage of any resources there to help you save time and energy when putting your campaign together. All right, so we've covered, again, some of the key basics that everyone needs to know to be up to speed and ready for the event. Feel free to access that first training for more detail. And now we're gonna really focus on uh, the heart of today's training, which is giving day strategy. So the first um, and perhaps obvious piece of strategy here is secure early donations. One Island Giving Day is a 24 hour event, uh, but you don't have to wait until that day to accept donations. Of course, a lot of what makes this day fun and exciting for the community is that 24 hours of giving that sense of urgency. So you wanna keep that in mind, but it's a great idea to start reaching out to some key contacts, some close supporters ahead of the event, ask, for some early donations to help seed your campaign so that you build momentum and make sure that when the event starts, you already have some early gifts showing on your page. This is a great way to kind of kick off your efforts uh, and it will also help boost you when it comes to those prize incentives that we'll talk about a little later on. Any donation that you receive in advance of the campaign starting back from August 15th, will count for your leaderboard totals. And there are extra prizes available just for this early giving period. So definitely make sure uh, to keep those in mind when you build out your own strategy of starting to communicate and reach out to some key donors ahead of time. Whether uh, they're just a close supporter and you wanna get them involved early on, or you know they might not be available on the day of giving itself, ask for their gift and secure their gift in advance. The next key piece of strategy that we'll cover here is the concept of matching grants. And most nonprofits know the value of a matching grant. They know the potential of a matching grant. And really when it comes down to it, the excitement of the match uh, is very similar to the excitement of the giving day itself. Giving Day adds a sense of urgency. It creates this excitement around a 24 hour day to encourage donors to give in that day. And like One Island Giving Day, there are lots of prize incentives that give your donors the chance to increase their impact because their gift at a certain time of day or their gift along with all the other gifts that you receive make you eligible for these prize incentives. And both of those key things are the same things that make a matching grant exciting for you uh, as a nonprofit to offer on your own for this giving day. Add extra urgency and um, really give donors the chance to double or more their impact for the day. Really proven strategy here. And it may seem daunting to try and put together your One Island Giving campaign and get a matching grant on top of it. But we're here to break down just some of the key things that you can do to add this matching grant to your campaign to really help it uh, help improve the overall success of your effort. So three key steps to keep in mind when securing a matching grant. Your first step is of course to prospect. How can you identify potential leads that will give this matching grant to your organization? There's a lot of different people and groups of people that you can prospect for your matching gift, and each organization will have a little bit of a different audience here. One key group that every single nonprofit should have access to is board members. Board members are a key part of your organization and specifically the fundraising efforts of your organization. So it is well within the scope of their responsibility to consider providing a match you can 
ask each board member to give uh, a smaller gift and join them all together for one larger match that's being offered by the board as a whole. You could reach out to a single board member that hasn't met their giving goals for the year and provide an opportunity for them to make their final gift as a part of this campaign, but do it in the form of a match so that you can leverage that for further support. Uh, so again, every group should have board members that they can consider as one potential audience here. Most nonprofits will also have uh, at least a smaller segment of major donors that make larger gifts at some point throughout the year. We're of course getting close to the year-end giving season and you may have uh, one or two or even a small group of donors that always give a large gift right in line with that end of year giving season, the most generous time of the year. Why not plan ahead, reach out to one of these donors that you know will be making their gift later this year and ask them to make it early. And, and by doing that, you can share with them the opportunity to not just make their gift like they do every other year, but you can make their gift go even further this year by offering it as a match. And finally, of course, corporate sponsors and partners, whether it's an opportunity to engage with a new local partner or uh, a corporate partner that has supported your organization over the years, a match is a great opportunity to uh, allow them uh, to make their charitable gift to you for the year. A match gives you a little bit of more opportunity to uh, promote their support um, and market their uh, contribution. So lots of different types of groups that you can engage for this. And once you've identified these people, obviously cultivation is a key step. And this is true with every donor relationship that you have, but especially for a matching grant. Take time to connect with these potential prospects, communicate with them, learn about their key interests. And that's really going to drive your final step, which is, of course, the ask. Because each of those different key groups that I mentioned would likely need a little bit of a different ask. What's important to a corporate partner may not be important to a major gift donor to your organization or to a board member for your organization. So make sure that the ask that you have really appeals to what you have taken the time to learn about the key interests of that individual or that group. If your corporate sponsors are really interested in getting their name out, getting the word out about their company, you'll want to use the ask to, to talk to them about all the ways that you can promote their match on your page, in your emails, on social media. But again, that's likely going to be a different kind of ask, a different kind of experience for an individual donor who might be much more interested in the impact that your organization can have. So take the time to think about these potential prospects and really craft an ask that you know is going to appeal to what they're looking for. You've got lots of options when it comes to actually promoting that match on your donation page. So you can let the donor decide if they wanna give you $5,000 and it's a one-to-one -one match as you raise funds throughout the day, that's a great opportunity. You can also use it as a two-to-one match, a three-to-one match. Uh, you can limit so that only the first $20 of each donation is matched. Uh, lots of different options there. So again, let that conversation with your donor decide how you should offer this match based on their interests and how you feel you can best use the incentive to encourage more giving. Of course, once you have secured that match, a key piece of your Giving Day strategy will be adding that match to your donation page and promoting that match as a part of the campaign. So the first step would be posting the match on your page. When you do that, you don't have to have the matching donor make their gift through the platform. It's really just a display feature that allows you to recognize the donor, add that extra sense of urgency and excitement to your campaign because people can see that there's a match live. That urgency of the countdown feel, uh, both in the actual time left 
on the match opportunity as well as the dollar value left to meet the match, that's going to appeal to that same sense of urgency that the overall giving day has. And it'll allow you to con count any of this uh, match in your totals right there on your organization page. So really great way to make sure that you are uh, having a successful campaign and sharing all of that success with your supporters. Once you've posted it on your page, make sure that you communicate it in all of your other channels as well. Promote the match in any of your email campaigns. Make sure donors understand that they have a chance to double their impact or increase their impact because of the matching incentive that you have available. Put that in the email to give that extra encouragement for them to click that donate button in the first place. Share progress throughout the day on social media as you get closer to meeting that match or after you've met that match. Really will give you a lot of opportunity to keep the day fun and engaging and hopefully drive larger and more donations from your supporters. So the next key strategy that we'll talk about here is ambassadors. And there are lots of different ways that an individual or a group of individuals can serve as an ambassador for your cause. Really, it's just a way for you to think about who do you have in your network that can help you spread the word, raise awareness, and raise more funds on this giving day. So there's lots of different people that you have in your network that you can turn to for this kind of support. And as well, there's lots of different ways that you can use these people. So you might ask some supporters to help you spread the word by sharing your message on social media. Anytime you post on Facebook, ask them to share your post. There might be some people that you ask to send an email to their list of uh, contacts to share your donation page. There might even be some that you ask to help you host an event or attend an event that you're hosting as a part of the day. There's lots of different ways that individuals can be involved. Uh, but one of the key ways that we'll talk about here as a part of this strategy is encouraging individuals to start peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your nonprofit. This is a really helpful strategy for a number of key reasons. When you empower an, inv an individual to tell their story about your organization and the impact that you've had on them personally, you'll have all kinds of exciting effects. One, you're sharing new personal impact stories. People, donors and supporters are used to hearing likely your communications message, but they're maybe not used to hearing from an individual who has been through your program or an individual whose friend or family member was helped by your services directly. So that's a really important way to continue the narrative and make it personal for people. These people, when they reach out to their friends and family, you get direct contact with all these people that you might not have already had in your network. So it'll allow you to acquire brand new donors and it'll help you raise more funds because these new donors are making a donation to your campaign and any funds that are raised by a peer to peer fundraiser for your organization will roll up into the totals that your organization is raising for the day. So that's going to be a really great way to help you climb up the leaderboard even faster during the day if you've got uh, one, two, even just a few individuals that have started campaigns on behalf of your organization that they're engaging their friends and family to make donations to. So it doesn't have to be an intimidating ask to get an individual to start a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for your organization. So first, just like we talked about with ambassadors and with that matching grant, think about who might be a good fit to start a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Not every supporter that you have will be a good candidate for this, but you may have some really great supporters, especially maybe younger supporters uh, that might not have as much to give directly themselves, but are very committed and passionate to your, to your organization. Uh, they might be a great fit to start this campaign. So reach out to these individuals, 
we always recommend doing personal outreach to these individuals to ask them to start a campaign. They are not a professional fundraiser like you might be. They don't spend a lot of their time doing it, uh, most likely. So they might need a little extra handholding to get started to make sure that you can really help them understand what's required and what isn't required. Help demystify it for them and, and really boil down and simplify the ask to just asking them to tell their story about why they support your work. It's always helpful to provide resources to these individuals to make it even easier for them, whether that's photos and uh, text copy that they can use on their page or sample email templates or social media posts that they can copy and paste to focus on spreading the word. Um, and, and one other option to consider here is if you have multiple individuals that you think might really be a good fit for this, you have the opportunity to create what we call a team fundraiser on the platform and encourage multiple people to start these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your organization. And you can kind of create this fun, friendly competition between those participants. Again, pulling on that same, uh, same key reason that the Giving Day is exciting, bringing together all local nonprofits in this friendly competition about giving back, you can kind of recreate that same concept within your own group of supporters. Team fundraising is often used for a 5K, a marathon, a walkathons, when you're trying to encourage a bunch of individuals to start pages on your behalf. But a giving day is another great opportunity to take advantage of this type of campaign to engage individuals. So now we'll focus just a little bit on a couple of key communication strategies to keep in mind for the event. At the core of uh, what you're doing here, you'll need and want to find a great way to spread the word to your message, uh, to your audience, excuse me, to get them to visit your donation page, make a donation, spread the word. So uh, when it comes to email strategy, just a few things to keep in mind. First, it's always important to read and reread and craft your message each of your emails to have a short and sweet and simple message. I can't tell you how many email newsletters I've read from nonprofits that go on and on with tons of content, tons of information, and it's all really important, helpful, relevant information from the organization's standpoint. But for a donor that receives tons of emails every single day, is taking a quick minute to check their inbox in the middle of the workday, You've got to keep it simple for them. Break it down for them. What is the key reason they should make their gift to support your campaign? Or what is the key ask? $10 will buy X. $25 will feed five families. Whatever it might be, really boil that message down. Make it simple because those donors don't spend all day every day in your organization. They're not in the weeds about what you do and how you communicate about what you do and, and the key details. So keep it simple, but appeal to them with an important hook. What's gonna make them open that email in the first place? A great subject line, really helpful um, imagery right at the top of your email. Uh, so all important just kind of in, in the overall development of your messages. Whenever you have the opportunity, segment your audiences. So rather than sending one email to everyone who is in your donor database, break down that list into just a few key groups. People that have don't made a donation so far this year versus people that haven't yet made their donation this year. Or people that are volunteers and monthly donors versus people that have attended events but maybe never made their first gift to your organization. Those are all different groups of people that you might want to speak to in a little bit of a different way to really meet them where they are. Segmentation is really one of the best ways to increase your return and engagement on your email communications. Always take the time to make sure your email communications are mobile friendly. 
across the One Island Giving Day platform. Your donation page, the donation experience for donors is mobile friendly, but chances are they're gonna start their process to get to that donation page from your email. And so your email has to be just as mobile friendly, really easy for them to click on a clear big button right on uh, the email that asks them to donate with a link to the page. So really make sure that you've tested and viewed that mobile experience and then test even more. Depending on the email program that you have, you might have the opportunity to A-B test and see what subject line leads to higher open rates with your donors or what image placed in the email itself is more compelling to get donors to actually click on the donate button. There's all different kinds of things you can test with relative ease in certain email programs. So it's great to take the time to, to really test those out and optimize so that you make sure uh, the most powerful and impactful version of your email is getting to your supporters. Beyond email, of course, with a giving day, social media, is one of the key ways that you can drive conversation during the event. So there's a ton of networks out there, a ton of different social channels, but you don't have to appeal and have content for every single channel. It's really important to focus on where your donors are, where your audience is. So if you have a huge audience on Facebook, that's where your uh, supporters typically engage. Spend your time there. If instead Twitter or Instagram really seems to be the, the channel that you get engagement with your followers, focus on those. Use your time wisely and develop a strategy and pay attention to the places where your audience is really gonna find you. Schedule posts ahead of time for the giving day itself and that will allow you or whoever on your staff or whatever volunteers helping out with social media on the giving day. It will allow them to focus their efforts just on interacting, responding to comments, retweeting great things that your donors share when they've made their gift. Allow that space for interaction and conversation. That's really the beauty of social media. A giving day is a great time to uh, try boosted posts. Uh, so for a relatively limited budget, you can try uh, to boost some of your posts in the lead up and on the giving day itself to increase that reach of individuals that'll be seeing your um, posts. And you can do that organically by making sure that you have creative and engaging content in the posts as well. So rather than just including text, and information about your campaign, always include a video, always or always include a photo or videos whenever you have it. Include those personal stories, include content that individuals are gonna want to pay attention to, they're gonna want to share, and that's really gonna help drive the uh, engagement and the reach behind your social activity for the day. Uh, and again, always make sure that you have a really clear call to action and a link to your donation page in every post. Donate now, give now, share this page, whatever it might be, make sure that you have a clear ask and always have your link in every post that you can. Of course, Instagram, you can put your link in your bio. Really important to make sure that uh, you're giving donors the option to take action with your posts. One of the key things that uh, any returning organizations who participated in last year's Giving Day can do this year to amplify their efforts, step up their efforts, is to take the time to focus on donor retention. So through the One Island Giving platform, you have access to download a list of anybody who donated to your campaign last year. Get that list and make a special plan for those individuals. Work with them directly to increase their gift from last year. Either increase the size of their gift, ask them to turn their gift into a matching gift, 
Uh, maybe they're a good candidate for a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser because they're already aware of the campaign and they've given lots of options there to really focus on this group and then pay attention during the day itself, halfway through the day, some point late afternoon, check in with this list again and see how many of those donors that gave last year that still haven't come back to make their gift and do targeted follow-up with those people in particular. They've already made the effort to give to your organization for One Island Giving Day. So you know they know your organization, you know they know the event, they should be a much easier ask, they should be a much easier donor to get to convert than a brand new donor that you're trying to uh, convert through any of the other strategies that you are using throughout the day. We all know that the campaign does not end at the end of One Island Giving Day. So it's important to take time now to plan what that follow-up looks like for your organization. How are you going to find opportunities for prompt and personal thank yous for those key donors? Uh, paying special attention, of course, to new donors, first-time donors to your organization. What are you going to do? What kind of strategies do you have in place to really cultivate those donors in a different way than a returning donor to make sure they feel fully welcomed and onboarded as a part of your organization? and you turn them from a one-time donor to an ongoing supporter for your cause. It's always helpful to find a way to close the loop on the giving day and the impact that you were able to have. So if you're raising $10,000 for a new truck, for example, take the time to follow up once you've purchased that truck. Share photos or stories about what that's gonna enable you to do one, two, three months down the line Whenever you're able to really see that impact happen, that's a great way to reiterate to donors, reassure donors that you have used their funds wisely and remind them of the impact that they have helped you have. And that's just really all a part of the whole year round stewardship and communication process. Of course, giving days are once throughout the year, uh, but the real value in them is the opportunity to find new donors and engage donors. Um, and it's up to you as an organization how much value you can get out of that by how you take that relationship that starts on a giving day and really carry that throughout the year so that they become a committed follower for your organization. And now some key information on the exciting prize opportunities that are available. So throughout the day on One Island Giving Day, there will be leaderboards on the event site tracking the uh, success of participating organizations. So organizations will be broken down into different categories based on the size of their organization. This is chosen, uh, this is um, categorized based on the budget size that each organization selects in their registration form. But there will be small, medium, large, and extra large nonprofits leaderboards available throughout the day. And the top three organizations in each of those categories will have the opportunity to win these prizes that you see here. So the first prize organization for each of those four leaderboards has the chance to walk away with an additional $7,500 in funds as a part of the campaign. That could make a huge difference uh, for an organization in terms of really amplifying the effect of your One Island Giving Day campaign. These leaderboards will rank throughout the day based on the number of dollars that are being received by an organization. So the way to move up that leaderboard is to encourage more gifts, more dollars from your supporters. There will also be one prize given away at the end of the 24 hours for the organization across all categories that has the most unique donors that give to their campaign throughout the campaign. Aside from those leaderboards, which will start counting, as I mentioned earlier, from 
early giving all the way through the end of the giving day, there are a handful of hours throughout the day that will have extra opportunities for nonprofits to walk away with key funds. So we call these power hours from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning. The organization that has the most unique donors give to their campaign will receive a $1,000 prize. From noon to 1 p.m., the organization that has the most dollars given to their campaign will win a $1,000 prize. And then finally, from 5 to 6 p.m., that happy hour time frame, the organization that has the most unique donors that gives to their campaign will win a $1,000 prize. So think about those hours and how you might be able to adjust your strategy to really take advantage of those hours. You've got early morning, lunchtime, and happy hour. Maybe you consider uh, a happy hour event that brings supporters together between that five to six time frame to really capitalize on encouraging those gifts. Maybe you plan your first email in the morning and a follow-up email right around lunchtime. Consider what's the right way to best engage your donors and be um, making yourself eligible for these key hours where you have the chance to win some extra funds. As I mentioned earlier, you don't have to wait until the giving day itself to start winning prizes. There are a handful of prizes that are available uh, ahead of the event. So the, the most exciting ones are uh, the opportunity to win uh, first and second prize, again, broken down by size. So small nonprofits compete against small nonprofits, medium nonprofits compete against medium nonprofits, and the organization, the top two organizations that have the most unique donors that give to their campaign from early giving, which started all the way back on August 15th through 1159, the day before the giving day, the organizations with the most unique donors will win first and second prize, an additional either $1,000 or $500 to help really kick off your giving day campaign. Aside from that, there's also a social media prize. So the organization that has the most new likes or followers to their Instagram or Facebook page as a part of this campaign will also have the opportunity to win a $1,000 prize. So with that, hopefully we have uh, shared enough strategy for everyone to get started on their campaign and enough excitement and an incentive for everyone to get started right away so that you can be eligible for all those great prize opportunities to really walk away from this campaign with the most funds that you can for your organization, carrying out the important mission that you do. So with that, I'll see if we have any questions that have come in. Uh, I'll take this time to mention that if you have questions throughout the campaign as you're working on your page, um, have questions about how to upload a video, how to access your donations report. Uh, you can, of course, visit the nonprofit toolkit to watch that initial training, or feel free to contact our customer support team at support at mightycause.com. And it looks like we don't have any questions live on the webinar today, so we'll go ahead and let everyone get back to their day. Again, thanks for your time, and good luck with your One Island Giving campaign.